Chinese ships are swarming a reef in the South China Sea. Are they sheltering from rough seas or taking more territory? Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Trouble is brewing in the South China Sea. Again. This is Whitson Reef. It's about 175 miles off the coast of the Philippines. It's also in the Spratly Islands. If that name sounds familiar, it's because the Chinese Communist Party has been building artificial islands in the Spratlys for almost a decade now. More about those islands in a moment. But the recent news is, a massive Chinese fishing fleet has anchored at Whitson Reef, causing tensions with the Philippines. In early March, the Philippine Coast Guard spotted more than 200 Chinese ships at Whitson Reef. The Coast Guard later released this image of some of those ships. The Philippine Defense Secretary has asked the Chinese vessels to leave. That's because Whitson Reef is within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, according to international maritime law. But to no one's surprise, the Chinese Communist Party has ignored international maritime law. China ignored the call, insisting it owns the offshore territory, and that the vessels were sheltering from rough seas. Ok, territorial claims aside, sheltering from rough seas sounds reasonable, right? The problem is, that's a lie. It's a lie because these Chinese ships have been at Whitson Reef since December 2020. That's according to Simularity, a tech company that analyzes satellite images. The satellite imagery shows that large numbers of Chinese ships have been arriving, mooring, and departing Whitson Reef since mid-December. In these images from last week, Simularity counted approximately 200 Chinese ships, including some which may be Chinese Coast Guard ships. They also said only one ship appeared to be visibly fishing. And in images from March and stretching back to December, you can see these ships moored together. Which is also what's happening in this photo released by the Philippine Coast Guard. As Similarity points out, the ships lashed together like this are not fishing. They're also not wading out rough seas, because lashing ships together in rough seas can damage them. So that's also a lie. So what are these ships doing? Are they playing bumper boats? Are they LARPing Waterworld? Maybe they're forming a fishing vessel Megazord. Or doing a historical reenactment of the Battle of the Red Cliffs. Or they're getting together for a massive TikTok sea shanty sing-along. But if it's not any of those, the most likely explanation is the Chinese Communist Party is trying to occupy Whitson Reef. Those ships will stay there until everyone else just gives up and accepts it. And then the Chinese Communist Party will take over the reef and eventually start building an artificial island on top. And that's even more likely given that at least some of those Chinese fishing vessels are actually part of China's maritime militia. In fact, Tracking shows that several of these maritime militia ships have been patrolling the area for the last year. And they're patrolling in patterns that no normal fishing vessels would ever exhibit. When faced with accusations from the Philippines that these fishing vessels are actually part of China's maritime militia, the Chinese embassy said, there is no Chinese maritime militia. Which is another lie. Boy, they're good at that. More after the break. Welcome back. If all this Whitson Reef stuff feels like deja vu, it's because a similar thing happened back in 2012 at the Scarborough Shoal. There was a two-month standoff between Chinese and Philippine ships at the Shoal, until the U.S. stepped in to negotiate. By the end of the meeting between Kurt Campbell, then the top U.S. diplomat for Asia, and Fu Ying, China's vice foreign minister for Asia, the U.S. side believed they had an agreement for both sides to withdraw. But the Chinese side immediately broke the agreement. Because when the Philippines withdrew their ships, the Chinese ships stayed. And the Chinese regime has pretty much controlled the Scarborough Shoal since. When we went to the Scarborough Shoal in 2016 in a Filipino fishing boat, 
we could see the Chinese Coast Guard ships guarding the entrance to the shoal. And although we were able to get to the shoal, Chinese ships often stopped Filipino boats from being able to go there. The boat we were on had even previously been rammed by the Chinese Coast Guard. So far, the Chinese Communist Party hasn't built an artificial island at the Scarborough Shoal. They're content to just hold on to their control over the area. But that's not the case in the Spratly Islands, where Whitson Reef is located. The Chinese regime has already built seven artificial islands in the Spratlys. Since 2013, China has added 3,200 acres of new land in the Spratlys. One of these new islands on Hughes Reef is only 10 nautical miles from Whitson Reef. Three of China's most advanced artificial islands are in the Spratlys as well. Subi Reef, Mischief Reef, and Fiery Cross Reef. In 2018, China quietly installed missile systems on those islands. So if the Chinese regime takes over Whitson Reef, which was previously unoccupied, it's much more likely they'll build an island there too. Especially because many of the areas near Whitson Reef are claimed by other countries. The closest occupied reefs are claimed by Vietnam which means Vietnam is not happy about the situation either. So this could become an even bigger standoff than the Scarborough Shoal incident back in 2012. The Philippines is now sending fighter aircraft over the Chinese vessels to monitor the situation. And the Philippines Defense Secretary says the military will also beef up its naval presence in the South China Sea to conduct sovereignty patrols and protect Filipino fishermen. Meanwhile, the U.S. has said it backs the Philippines in the standoff. The U.S. Embassy in Manila also accused China of using maritime militia to intimidate, provoke, and threaten other nations, which undermines peace and security in the region. You know, the maritime militia the Chinese regime says doesn't even exist. But here's the danger for the Biden administration. President Biden's Asia czar is Kurt Campbell. Campbell is the guy who negotiated the failed Scarborough Shoal deal in 2012. The Obama administration's mistake still has repercussions today. The fact that China got away with reneging on the 2012 Scarborough Shoal deal continues to undermine U.S. credibility. U.S. allies like the Philippines believed they had to adopt a friendlier policy to the Chinese Communist Party because the U.S. wouldn't be able to help them. Meanwhile, the Chinese Communist Party adopted the Scarborough model. It still uses those same tactics to take over territory elsewhere, bit by bit. They do it all over the South China Sea and on the Indian border. And the party is not going to stop because it works. So what happens now at Whitson Reef? The best case scenario is international pressure mounts until the Chinese ships are forced to leave. But so far, the Chinese Communist Party is just denying everything and showing no signs of backing down. Which means the U.S. will likely have to get involved. The U.S. has said it backs the Philippines. But would the Biden administration make the same mistake as the Obama administration? Will they believe the Chinese Communist Party's lies? If they do make that mistake, that would be a huge blow to the U.S. and its ability to keep the peace in the region. And it would be a huge win for the Chinese Communist Party and its ultimate goal to control the entire South China Sea. Let's hope the U.S. has learned its lesson from 2012. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support the show on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Ian Jackson asks, Ah, Chris, you're like a Taiwanese pineapple. Rough on the outside, sweet on the inside, and the CCP is trying to ban you. So what's the story with the CCP? When will they learn that trying to ban something just makes everybody look at it in greater detail? Didn't they get the memo? Well, Ian, I never really thought about it before, but I guess I am like a Taiwanese pineapple. If you didn't see our episode about it, China recently banned the import of Taiwanese pineapple. That created a huge backlash. In four days, the people of Taiwan bought the entire year's worth of exports. And then globally, people began buying up Taiwanese pineapples. So I guess that's one bright side to the Chinese Communist Party's aggressive behavior. It often backfires, blowing up in its face and 
exposing the true nature of the party to the world's people. Let's hope the same thing happens with the Whitson Reef. Thanks for your question, Ian. And thank you for watching. If you'd like me to answer your question on the show, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army for as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash China Uncensored for more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.